Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 67. Please turn to it. Page number 67 and today is our lesson number 17. Let's see what we have here. On page 67 we are dealing with converting fractions to percentages. The very first one tells us, the very first one asks us to convert 5 a to a percent. 2.21 2.21 it says convert convert 5 8 to a percent now listen for those of you for those of you who have not been watching these videos these videos in proper sequence I'm reminding you here that on day 8 and 9 we learn how to convert decimals into fractions, how to convert fractions into percentages, and so on and so forth. We learned in these two days, on day 8 and day 9, we learned our tenths, we learned our fifths, we learned our quarters, we learned our eighths, we learned the thirds, and the sixths. You should know, you must know these fundamental information, fundamental facts by heart. You should have it, have that on your, uh, I don't know what the expression is, on the fingertips I believe, I don't know what the expression is. Uh, anyway, you must know these by heart. The quarters, the tenth, the eighths, the sixth, the thirds, these are very basic, very elementary things. And on those two days, on day eight and nine, we learn just this, we learn that 5 8 can be written as 4 8 plus an 8 and what we learned was when we, when we dealt with when we dealt with the 8 that was the very first one obviously 1 8 and how much is 1 8 in percentage let's find out shall we 1 8 1 8 as you know 1 8 as we know is just half of 1 quarter Half of one quarter is one eighth, of course. If you have a quarter of a slice and you cut even go a quarter of the slice into two parts, you got an eighth of a pizza. We already know that one quarter is 25%. So the question is, what is half of 25? Half of 25% would be 12.5%. That's it. And one eighth is 12.5%. So that's what we have here. And this is four eighths. Four eighths is just half. Four eighths is just a half, which is 50% plus 12.5%. And that's what we're dealing with. So what we're dealing with here is, I shouldn't have written all this thing here. What we're dealing with is that this part is 50% and this part is 12.5%. So altogether it's going to be 62.5%. The answer is 62.5%. That's all. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number, number 22. Number 22. Just give me one second. You have to know all your eights. All your eights. So that was day eight and nine. Day eight and nine. One more time, very quickly. One eight that we just saw is twelve and a half percent. Two eight is just a quarter. This is just a quarter, which is twenty-five percent. Three eight. If you want to find three eight, it's very simple. No need to memorize anything. We just have to know the first one. Three eight is just two eight plus an eight. 2 8 plus an 8 is just 25 plus 12. 25 plus 12 is 37 percent. It's 37 and a half percent. And then 4 8 is just half, which is 50 percent. And we continue here. Uh, 5 8, we just did that. 5 8, we just did that, which is 4 8 plus an 8, which is 4 8 is half, half, half which is 50 percent, and 12 and a half percent. So that gives out, comes out with 62 and a half percent. 6 8 is very easy because 6 8 is just 3 quarter, 3 quarter 
which is just 75 percent and finally the 7 8 7 8 again same trick we take our 3 quarter which is 6 8 3 quarter which is 6 8 and we add 1 8 to it 6 8 plus 1 8 is going to be 7 8 and 6 8 we already know is 75 percent so it's 75 plus 12 and a half percent all together is going to give us 87 and a half percent which is our 7 8 there's no need to memorize actually if you understand the concept they come very easily as I said you just have to know the first one which is not a big deal at all just realize that an eighth is half of a quarter an eighth is a half of a quarter and quarter of course everybody knows is 25 percent half of 25 is 12 and a half number two number two is it says convert seven tenths into percent. Twenty-two. It says convert seven tenth to a percent. Now this is just silly. This is just being silly. Seven tenth, of course, we know is 0 0.7, and everybody knows that that's seventy percent. Again, we did all of this thing. Day eight and day nine. On those two days, we did all of these percentages. As I said, the tenth, the fifth, of course, tenth and the fifth, they come in pair. Then we did the quarters and the eighths, and then we did the third and the sixth. Third and the sixth, because the sixth is just half of one third. Let's say we're done. It's 0.7 or 70%. Next one, 23. 2.23. 2 2.23. 2 it says convert 35% to a fraction. And what does percent mean? Percent means per 100. Percent means exactly what it says. It's right there. Percent. Percent means per 100. Out of 100. Out of 100. Per 100. That's what it means literally. So 35% is just 35 out of 100. And all we have to do now is reduce it. Divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5's in a 35? 7 5's are 35. And how many 5's in a 10? 10 has two 5's and then another 0. In other words, there are 20 nickels in a dollar. Of course, everybody knows that. 20, there are 20 nickels in a dollar. Uh, five, five twenties. Five twenties a hundred. So it's just seven over 20. And that's it. We can't do anything more. Because this is already in its simplest form. You can't reduce it anymore. That's your answer. Seven, seven twenty-eight. Number 24. 2.24. It says convert 78%. Convert 78% into decimal. Oh, this is too silly. 78% is just 78% is just 0.78. And if they wanted in fraction, it would simply be 78 over 100. Percent means over 100. And that, of course, we need to reduce because we can't just leave it like that. Let's divide top and bottom by two. So that becomes 50, and how do we divide 78 into 2? This is how we do it. How many 2's in a 7? 7 has 3 2's. 3 2's are 6. 3 2's are 6. The remaining one goes and joins the 8, becomes 18. How many 2's in a 18? There are 9 2's. So this is the simplest form, 39 over 50. Even though, even though the question is not asking, asking us to give it in fraction, simplest fraction, they are asking us to give it in decimal, which is just 0.78. 78% is 0 0.78, but, they were, if, but if they were asking for 78% in its simplest fractional form, it will be 39 over 50. That's all, that's all we can do here. Let's do one more. 25. 225. What does 25 say? So we have moved on to the next page here. We are on 225, 224, 225. We are on page number 68 now. Two twenty-five says, convert. Ah, oh, this, this is a little tricky one. Let's do it on the blackboard from the from the very top because this is as I said a little tricky. Two twenty-five. Convert. Point two five. Two percent. Just listen to me, 0.25, for, that's not what the book is asking, but listen to me for a second. 
0.25 is how much percent? If something is expressed in decimal as 0.25, well, we know that 0.25 is 25 percent. Question is, how do we convert a decimal into a percent? We know the answer. The answer is 25 percent. But how do we go about showing our work? How do we do it? Well, we need to take this decimal point and move it two places. And how does, how does that happen? Well, that happens by multiplying it by 100. When we multiply 0.25 by 100, we move the decimal places two places, and 0.25 times 100 becomes 25%. So if somebody asks us to convert 0.25 to a percent, the answer is 25. Of course, we know it. Similarly, 0.5 is what percent? Again, 0.5 we know is 50%. It's because this is 0 0.50, which is being multiplied by 100, and this decimal places goes up two places, and becomes 50%. Similarly, 0.1 is simply point 0.1, again point 0.1 is not just point 0.1, it's point, if it's point 0.1, it doesn't matter how many zeros you stick at the end, it's still point 0.1. So you move it two places, 1, 2, and it becomes 10%, times 100 that is, and it will become 10%. So the question is, how do you convert decimal into, uh, decimal into percentage? By multiplying it by 100. That's what we're going to do here. The question is asking us to convert 0 0.045, 0 0.045, percent. So let's do that. We're going to take our 0 0.025, 0 0.045 rather, and we're going to multiply it by 100. And that will convert it into decimal, just like it did here. Multiply it by 100 and it will be percentage. So let's do that. Here is our decimal. When we multiply it by 100, we have to move the decimal, pla decimal point two places to the right. 1, 2 is going to end up here. So it's 4.5%. It's 4.5 percent, 4.5 percent, or 4.5 percent. So that was number. That was number 25. Was it? Yes. That was number 25. Let's move on to the exercises on the same page, on page 68. The practice problem. There are three of them. Remember, day 8 and day 9. Practice problems. What's the first one say? It says convert 319%. Convert 319% to a... And the first thing they ask is fraction. To a fraction. Well, that's, that's quite straightforward. 319 percent, we know percent means over 100. So it's 319, 319 over 100, which can be written as, which can be written as 300 over 100 plus 19 over 100. And of course, 3 over 100, 300 over 100 is just 3. So it's 3 plus 19 over 100, which of course boils down to 3 and 19 plus 100. The next part asks us to convert the same thing into decimal. B into decimal. We just learned it. We learned that if we have uh, this thing here, 319 percent, that is same as 319 divided by 100. And what happens when you divide by 100? We have to take our decimal point and move it to the left two places. When we do that, we end up with here, here, we're going to end up here. This is the same as 3.19. Next one, number 2. That's it, we are done with this one. That was number 1. Let's move on to number 2. Convert 0 0.681. 0 0.681 to a percent to a percent. Well, how do we convert the decimal into a percent? We just did it a little while ago. How do we convert a decimal into a percent? Well, multiply it by 100. If you multiply it by 100, the decimal is going to move two places, one and two, right here. It's going to become 68.1%. Then they ask us to convert the same thing into fraction. Part B says, 
convert it into fraction. So we have 0.681. How do we convert this into fraction? Well, somehow we have to get rid of the decimal point. That's the whole bloody point here. But how do we get rid of the decimal point? Multiply top and bottom by 1000. Now 0.681 times 1000, we're going to take our decimal place, 0 0.681, 0.681, when we multiply it by 1000, we take our decimal places and we move it three places, 1, 1, 2, and 3, it becomes, it becomes 681. So on the top we get 681, on the bottom we get 1000, and that's it. That's your fraction. We can't do anything else with it because in the bottom we have an even number, on the top we have an odd number. We can't really divide by two. It's not going to be divisible by anything. They have no common factor there. Is this top number 681 divisible by three? Can you tell me very quickly? Can we digress? Are you interested in digression? Let's learn it. Let's learn it very quickly. Just by looking at it, can, are you able to tell me if 681 will be divisible by three evenly? You want to learn it? Let's do it, shall we? I need the rule. Here's the rule. The rule is a number is divisible by 3 if the sum, SUM sum of its digits, if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So we are asking ourselves, can we divide 681 into 3 evenly? That's what we are trying to figure out now. Let's do it, shall we? 681, we want to find out if it is divisible by 3. And all we have to do is, look, is to look at the sum of the digits, SUM sum. 6 plus 8 is 14, 14 plus 1 is 15. Since 15 is divisible by 3, that tells us that 681 is divisible by 3. Let's do it, shall we? How many 3's in a 6? Six? 6 has two threes. How many threes in eight? Eight has two threes. Two threes are six. What happens to the remaining two? The remaining two goes and joins the one, becomes twenty-one. How many threes in a twenty-one? Twenty-one has seven threes. Voila. In other words, two hundred and twenty-seven times three is going to give us six hundred and eighty-one. So what we had before was this. What we had was this. Six hundred and eighty-one over 1000 that we had, which can be approximated as, which can be approximated as 681 over 999. Obviously a thousand is not divisible by three. And how do we know a thousand is not divisible by three? Because if you were to take the sum of the digits of thousand, it'll be just one plus zero plus zero plus zero. So sum of the digits of a thousand is just one. And one does not divide even into three. 999 on the other hand does. And we already know that 681 divide divided by 3 is 227. So this one boils down to 227 over 323. Now don't ask me what, what we're going to do with it. I don't know. We're going to pickle it. I don't know. They're not asking for anything like this. It was just a digression. Let's move on. What number was it? That was part B. Let's move on to number 3. And number 3, asked, they're asking, oh, number 3 is just too silly. This is too silly. Let's do number 3 at the bottom. I don't know why they do that, why they waste everybody's life like this. They're asking us to convert three quarter into a percentage and a decimal. Oh, for Christ's sake. Three quarter in decimal is just 0.75 and in percentage, of course, is 75%. There's nothing to it. That's it. We're going to stop right here. Tomorrow we'll go to the next page, obviously, where we're dealing with comparing numbers which is a different topic, we'll do that separately. Comparing fraction rather, to be, to be more precise. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? On day number 18. Bye now.